Hi there, folks. My name is Casey. I hope you're having a great day today. So today on the Man Cave, we're going to look at two Yamaha electric guitars. We have an entry-level model, the Pacifica 112 VM, and then we also have the bigger brother of that, the Pacifica 612 V2 FM. So stay tuned to check it out. All right, so let's quickly talk specs about these two guitars and just compare them a little bit, see what they have in common and what sets the higher end version apart from the lower end version. So starting with the 112V, um, what you get with this guitar is you get Alnico 5 pickups, single, single hum with a splittable humbucker, which is a nice feature for an entry level guitar. 13.75 inch radius on the neck. This particular model has the the maple fretboard and maple neck with the satin finish on the back. Most of the, the Pacifica 112 V's have a ro rosewood fretboard, but um, this one has a sort of a slab maple on top of the maple neck. Um, Five-way switch and alder body um, and just standard Yamaha tuners, nothing, nothing fancy. They, they do the job and it's got a plastic nut um, which is what you would expect on an entry-level guitar. One thing I really like about this guitar is that it is super light, six and a half pounds. And I, I really like the satin finish on it too. It's very attractive, just feels nice. Anyway, you know, this is the kind of guitar that I can trust, I can play it, you know, but I wouldn't worry about it getting stolen so much because I can pick another one up for 300 bucks, right? I mean, I wouldn't want it to get stolen. I really like this one. In fact, I bonded with it quite a bit. I bought this when I lived in France last year, and I, and uh, it was my partner during the COVID lockdown over there, and it was the only guitar I had when I was there. Well, that's not true. I did have another guitar there, but um, this is the one I played a lot. I had a, a much more expensive guitar, but I preferred to play this one because I just really love HSS strats. They're just so comfortable, and they're so versatile. They do everything. So anyway... That's the 112V, and then I saw this little guy on Craigslist for a nice price. They sell brand new for about $650 plus tax, but this is the 612V. I guess it, I mean, the full name is 612V2FM, FM for a flame maple. So I think it's just sort of got a thin flame maple veneer there. I haven't really taken things apart to see how thick the, the cap is on it, but I think it's just a thin veneer. And you can see on the headstock, it's a real thin veneer, too. So it's just a cosmetic little thing that I don't really care that much about. It's, it's kind of cool looking, though. Um, but what really sets this guitar apart from the other one, well, what they have in common is they both have alder bodies. They both have maple necks. This one has the, the rosewood fretboard, whereas the other one has a maple fretboard. But they both have maple necks. This one has a glossy finish, whereas the other one has a satin finish. Um, what really sets this one apart, though, is it has the Seymour Duncan pickups in it. It's got the SSL1 pickups, which have the staggered pull pieces, and it's, and it's got the TB14 uh, Seymour Duncan humbucker. Um, really great sounding little humbucker. Splittable coil, just like the other one. Five-way switch, volume. Um, and another feature that sets this one apart is that it has Grover locking tuners, which are really nice. Um, I have a few other guitars that have the kind of locking tuners where you turn a knob on the back. And I didn't even really understand how these worked when I first got the guitar, but it turns out all you do to, it's just self-locking. When you change your strings, you just put your string through there and pull it tight and just start tuning it up and it just automatically locks down on the string. So you can, if you looked closely at this, you would see that the strings are only going around about half a wind. So it's really cool. It makes changing your strings, it's even easier than the ones where you turn the knob on the back. So I really like that. And I think it's also got a GraphTech nut and, and GraphTech string trees up here, which is an upgrade over the other one. Oh, another major feature is it has a Wilkinson trim. The Wilkinson trim is really nice. Um, the saddles have little screws on top that lock them down. So it gives you a little added tuning stability. 
it's got the six. This particular one has the uh, sort of six screw vintage style trim thing going. And it's also got a screw that locks the tremolo sort of from swinging freely. You can just sort of tighten it down how much you want or, you know, how easily you want that to turn. That's a nice feature. So anyway, yeah, it has a few upgrades. It's about twice the price. Um, I think it's easy to argue that it's worth the price if you want the higher end features. Um, if you really want those Seymour Duncan pickups, I mean, just the price of those pickups alone, if you were to just to buy those pickups, they're about 300 bucks. I know because I've looked it up and I, because I thought about putting the same pickups in the lower end one, but then I thought you just might, at that point, you may as well just buy the higher end one, get the better tuners, get the graph tech stuff. You know, get the nicer paint job, all that. Um, so I think it's a good bargain. So this one's about six hundred fifty dollars. The other one's about three hundred dollars. So you know, roughly twice the price. But I think six hundred fifty bucks is not a lot for sort of a high spec guitar these days. And you know, this one I would, I'd say it specs pretty close to like a. It definitely specs out a little better than the player the player series by Fender. I have one of the deluxe series strats in an HS configuration. I'd say they're very similar. They both have locking tuners and um, you know, nice pickups. So yeah, it's a it's a nice, you know, I think favorably compares with like, you know, thousand to fifteen hundred dollar guitars. So let's just see how the two sound. Well what I'll do is I'll just go through some sounds on each of the the pickups and just compare settings there. I'll just leave the tone wide open, the volume wide open, and just go through the five settings on the pickup selector. And we'll just see, is there a big difference in how they sound? In terms of how they feel, um, of course this one feels a little nicer in the hand, but really not that much more. I mean, maybe it's just psychological, like it's just, you know, more expensive and it looks a little nicer, but really it's hard to tell the difference in the way that feels in the hand. Um, the knobs and the pots feel about the same. The switches feel about the same. So even the fancier Wilkinson trim, just in practice, I'd say it's not a huge advantage on this one over the other one. But let's see how they sound. That's where it's really at, right? All right, let's do it. OK. 112V. Volume and tone all the way up. And I have the amp mostly, I'm set on the clean channel, treble at about five, bass at about five, and I've got the reverb up to about five.
split. Split coil. All right. Well, that was a lot of fun. I enjoyed. A, B, and those two guitars and seeing what the difference is. I've had them both for a while and I've never really played them back to back so I could really put my finger on exactly what the difference is. But it's kind of what I thought. The 112V has a bit of a brighter sound, a bit janglier, and the 612 to me sounded a bit warmer, um, has a little bit higher output, and I like the sound of the humbucker a little, little bit better just because I think it has a bit more snarl and growl to it. Um, but both guitars do what an HSS Strat is supposed to do. It sounds like a Strat when you're on the single coil pickups and then when you want to you know, kick in the nitrous booster and have something extra for a lead or you know, for heavier genres, you've got the humbucker there ready to go. And I was also happy with the way both of these guitars sounded with, with the coil split. You got a really jangly, you know, sort of country sound or, you know, really biting trebly sound on both of those humbuckers when they were split. So it added extra versatility there. I mean, both of these guitars, I mean, that's what an HS Strat, HSS Strat is about. It's about having a really versatile guitar that can cover a lot of ground. Um, you know, if you're playing like in a cover band and you're going to be playing you know, a wide range of like hard stuff to sort of poppy stuff and anything in between. You, I mean, this is the these are the kind of guitars you want, in my opinion. Um, the main difference is just a little bit higher spec on the 612 and, you know, a little bit more pristine of a sound, I think. So if I was going to be doing a lot of recording, I'd probably probably really want that 612. But in a live situation, either one of them would be great. All right, so that's my review. You know, let me know what you think in the comments, and if you like this video, you know, feel free to subscribe, and I'll try to get some more stuff up like this in the near future. All right, thanks for watching. Bye now.